protects your private keys. I'll just read what the bill states so that I don't misspeak. No person shall be compelled to produce a private key or make a private key known to any other person in any civil, criminal, administrative, legislative, or other proceeding in this state that relates to a digital asset, digital identity, or other interest or right to which the private key provides access unless a public key is unavailable or unable to disclose the requisite information with respect to the digital asset, digital identity, or other interest or right. Now, that's a lot of words. Yeah, that unless gets my attention, though. That's a lot of words. But the core point here shall not be compelled to produce a private key. But then it said unless the public key can't get them the information they need. Yeah. So they can be compelled in certain situations. This is why it's part of the Nostra segment, right? So let's use Nostra. You have a public and private mm-hmm. key. If you go to a court, and I'm just hypothesizing. And that's just your login information. Technically, only your private key is login information. And your public key is what people can see. Everyone can see your public yeah, key. Yeah, yeah. Hypothetically, and this is just a hypothetical. I'm not saying this is how this will play out. But I'm just using this as an example. Someone wants to see all of your tweets on Nostra, right? In a Twitter world, they would need your username and password, or they'd go to Twitter with a court document and say, Twitter, give us everything in the database on this username. Why right. couldn't they just look at my profile? Well, there's DMs and stuff, right? Like, Oh, okay. Okay, right? So okay. like with Twitter, because it's a username and password and you don't really control your password, that's in Twitter's database. Twitter can basically lock you out of your account and do whatever they so want to do. It's their information. It's their information. Yeah. With this law and how Nostra works, you can't compel me to give over my private key because my public key is basically made available to the world. But we're technically trusting these apps that we give our private keys to that put us on Nostra, right? Just using Domus for an example. Yeah. Like it's an open source project. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, the one I use, Amethyst, is an open source project. You can go in there and look at the code to see that they're not doing anything nefarious mm-hmm. with your private key. They're not sending it off to some database, right? I would be very leery of a not open source mm. Nostra client, okay. right? I trust you're not doing anything nefarious because it's open source. So that means you're not even storing the private key that's associated with my public key? I mean, there's I'm sorry, I'm getting pretty technical. You are getting pretty technical. But are you impressed that I'm asking these questions? It's impressive that you're asking the questions, but it's kind of missing the point. <laughs> right. Damn, so like you understand, but no, like you, brutal, under, <laughs> you understand the technical part of it, right? You're yeah. like, I gave you a private key. It's got to go somewhere. Right. And wherever it went, it's like, is that secure? Yeah. Right. And can Domus get my key and just turn it over just like Twitter could turn over my yeah, password. Right. Exactly. Okay. Without getting too technical, the answer is no. Okay. Right. But what this law says is that it's not just that you cannot be compelled. It's that even if Domus had your private key, they could not be compelled. They could not be compelled. Law enforcement can't compel you. Sure. All of that stuff. Sure. Now, we'll see how this holds up in court because obviously this is a bill that's been passed and it hasn't been kind of signed into law yet. But when you take this bill and then you look at how Domus works, it basically says you can never take my Domus account, my, my, my Nostra account, mm-hmm. right? Now, that doesn't mean that you can't see everything that I've posted on Nostra, right? Because my public key is available and you just plug it in and you can see all the things that I put out there. But this bill wasn't written for Nostra. This yeah. bill was being put in the works for Bitcoin probably before Nostra really took off. Yeah. So what Wyoming was doing was trying to protect people's Bitcoin private keys. Um, We got Senator Loomis from Wyoming. She's a pretty big Bitcoin advocate. Um, We got uh, Caitlin Long. She's not a politician, but she's trying to start a bank uh, called Custodia. I'll put a link in the show notes. But Wyoming has like a pretty decent Bitcoin vibe going through it already. I don't think you've ever mentioned this to me. What? Mentioned what? Wyoming. Well, I mean, all the action's happening in Texas, Mm -hmm. right? What, Seems like things are happening in Wyoming, too. So Wyoming is a little different than Texas because Wyoming has, I believe, a single representative in the House of Representatives, and they have a very small legislature and a very small population. That's easy to get stuff done. It's not that it's easy to get stuff done. It's that there tends to be a consensus in Wyoming. So when you talk about consensus and what Bitcoin is about is consensus, the fewer people there are, the easier it is to form a consensus. Some of the ethos of Wyoming, similar to Texas, similar to you know Colorado and like the West, which is like government should stay out of my shit. 
full stop. Now, if I got to write down each thing you need to stay out of, fine, I'll do it. And it seems like they felt it very important to write it down. And like I said, this bill was specifically targeted at Bitcoin. But because Nostra works on public and private keys also, they didn't say Bitcoin in this bill. Mm-hmm. They said private key. So now you have, if this goes through in Wyoming, you have like ultimate freedom of speech and ultimate monetary freedom in Wyoming. Yeah, until the federal government comes in and says, fuck your laws. <laughs> well, uh, I don't think they would win that battle. But there will be that battle. It'll happen. I mean, that battle has technically already happened. And that's the thing about Bitcoin and cryptography that I think a lot of people are missing when the Bitcoiners get really excited about how it's inevitable. We've already had the argument about cryptography being protected as speech. We've already had that battle and the government lost. There's a DOJ case. We can do an episode on it, but the short of it is that they tried to say that encryption was a national secret that should not be knowable. The people just printed it all out, all the code out on paper and said, well, it's speech. Like, it's just a mathematical equation. There's nothing special about it. And they backed off and they lost the case. This has already been settled that encryption is protected. The government has already lost this argument when it comes to encryption. And a lot of people are unaware of that court case. And we can we can do a whole episode about that. But why, what Wyoming is doing, while we might have won the battle with, well, you can't make encryption illegal, this is saying the thing that can unlock the encryption is protected. And if they pass this and they try to take it to court, if the government, the federal government tries to take the state of Wyoming to court over this, I imagine that they would lose because you just pull up that previous case and say, you're basically compelling someone. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out because I think the right to free speech is different from access to information. Right. So here's the thing. Let's let's try it a different way. I don't have a a private key anywhere. I got 12 words memorized in my head. Yeah. You know, as the government, you know that I have 12 words memorized in my head. How do you compel me? Yeah. I mean, that's what we talked about, I think, in our second or third episode. But this is my point, right? So like, how do you... Torture. (laughs) Right. Yeah, that's the only way. So the federal government has to torture me to get me to say these 12 words that will recreate my private key Mm -hmm. that will then unlock my Bitcoin. While I would like to say the federal government isn't in the business of torture, we know that they are. Mm -hmm. So this is like a little bit of extra like, hey, you can't compel... Yeah, someone yeah. to turn over their Look, private keys. I'm with you. I think this is like good legal precedent to set and all of those things, but I don't think that this is going to, I think that there's going to be a fight ahead. I think there's going to be a fight and I think it's that the government is going to lose. Yeah. I forget. I saw it somewhere. It doesn't say it in this article, but the state of Wyoming, whatever circuit of the courts that it is, that basically doesn't like the federal government. 